In section 4.1, we will talk about discrete probability functions. Let's look at some definitions. A random variable is a variable whose quantitative or numerical value is determined by chance. For example, if you roll a die, what is the probability that the die will land on a 3? That is a numerical value. And it's determined by chance because we don't know what a fair die will land on. We usually use capital letters to denote a random variable and a lowercase letter to, uh, to denote an observed value. For example, in the case of our die, the notation probability of x equals 3, this is the probability that the die will land on 3. x represents a random variable, 3 represents the actual value that we want the die to land on. There are two types of random variables, discrete and continuous. Let's look at some of the, dif the differences. A discrete random variable has data that has either a finite or countable number of values. These values are countable, able to list out, uh, often finite, but not always. For example, whole numbers such as 0, 1, 2, 3. The number of steps a person takes when running one mile, the, the person can take 1,200 steps or they can take 1,201 steps, but they can take 1,200.03 steps. The number of books in a backpack, the backpack could have two books or three books or four books, but you can't have 5.6 books. So discrete random variables are variables that are countable that we can list out. On the other hand, continuous uh, data, uh, this is a, cont a continuous random variable, this is quantitative data that can take on infinitely many values between the minimum and the maximum. This is not countable, cannot list out the values, and they're infinite and infinitely close together. For example, all the numbers between 0 and 1, we can't list those out because between 0 and 1, we have like 0.01, we have 0 0.001, we have 0 0.0001, we have 0 0.00001, and that's just with the 0.01s. Same thing for 0 0.02, 0 0.03. There are an infinite number of values between 0 and 1. Therefore, these are continuous and not discrete. In discrete, you would be able to count those out. Another example, the amount of, person, uh, the amount of time a person takes to complete a one-mile run. The person can complete the mile in 6.01 minutes. They can complete the mile in 6.001 minutes or 6.00001 minutes if we were able to count very accurately. We can just keep going. So there are an infinite number of times that a person can take in order to complete a one mile run. Same thing with the weight of a backpack. A backpack could weigh four pounds. It could weigh 4.3 pounds. It could weigh 4.30001 pounds. So as you can see, if you were to able to measure the weight of the backpack very accurately, it can take on an infinite number of values. In general, a good rule to remember is if something is a whole number and countable, it's most likely discrete. If something can be written as a decimal, it's most likely continuous. Let's see some examples. Determine if the following are discrete or continuous random variables. The number of students in a classroom. Well, this is finite. A, a classroom cannot hold an infinite number of students, and we can count the number of students. Right? So we can say the classroom has zero students, or one student, or two students, or three students, or four students, et cetera, et cetera. These are countable, so therefore, this is an example of a discrete random variable. The number of oil spills occurring off the Alaskan coast. We can have no oil spills, or one, or two, or three. But can we have 3.5 oil spills? No, we can't. So this is an example of a 
discrete random variable. The height of a randomly selected student. Okay, can a student be five feet? Yeah, student can be five feet. Can the student be 5.01 feet? Yes. Can the student be 5.0001 feet if we could measure very precisely? Yes. This can keep going infinitely. So therefore, this is an example of a continuous random variable. Uh, the number of field goals kicked in a football game. We can have no field goals kicked, or one, or two, or three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But can we have 4.9 field goals kicked? We can't. Therefore, this is an example of a discrete random variable. The braking time of a car. A car can take 8.1 seconds to brake. The car can take 8.101 seconds to brake. The car could take 8.100001 seconds to brake. And again, this can keep going if we can measure very precisely. So therefore, this is an example of a continuous random variable. Probability distribution of random variable, also called the probability model. For a discrete random variable, its probability distribution, also called the probability distribution function, is any table graph or formula that gives each possible value. So this is important. The probability distribution of random variable has a po possible value and the probability of that value. Okay, there are two things, the value and the probability of that value. For example, if we're going with the example of rolling a die, the, the die can land on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. These are the possible values that the die can land on. Each of the probabilities is 1, 6. They all have, if it's a fair die, they all have an equal chance of occurring. So this is the probability distribution of rolling a die. A valid probability distribution of random variable must, must satisfy the two conditions. One, the sum of all the probabilities across a distribution must be one. If you add up one six plus 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 one six, that'll, that'll add up to one. And each individual probability be, must be between zero and one, inclusive. So it could be zero, it could be one, but it can't be less than zero, it can't be greater than one. Here's an example. A census was conducted at a university. All students were asked how many tattoos they had. And the students that were asked had between zero and four tattoos, a minimum of zero, a maximum of four tattoos. First, notice we have a missing value here. So let's figure out what that value is. From the previous slide, we know that um, the each individual probability, the sum of all the probabilities across a distribution must be one. So if we add up these probabilities, that sum must equal to 1. So we have 0 0.850 plus 0 0.120 plus 0 0.015 plus, we don't know what this probability is, so we'll call this x, plus 0 0.005. All the probabilities, these must add to 1. So if, if you lose a little bit of algebra, combine our like terms, if you add 0.850 plus 0.120 plus 0.015 plus 0 0.005, this gives us 0.99. So we have 0.99 plus x equals to 1. If you subtract 0.99 from each side, then x will equal to 0 0.01. So the probability that an, an individual uh, a student has three tattoos is 0 0.01. Okay. Uh, let's go through our questions. Assume a student is randomly selected from this university. What is the probability that the student has no tattoos? In other words, the probability that the value of x, x is the number of tattoos, is zero. Well, the probability that the student has zero tattoos is 0 0.850. And this is how we would write uh, using proper notation. The probability that x equals to 0. In other words, the probability that the student has 0 tattoos is 0 0.850. Okay, next, what is the probability that the student has more than or equal to one tattoo? So that means that the student can have one tattoo. What's the probability the student has one tattoo? What's the probability the student has two tattoos? The probability the student has three tattoos? The probability the student has four tattoos? And we would add these probabilities because we want the probability that it's one or greater. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the probability the student has one tattoo is 0 
two tattoos is 0 0.015, three tattoos is 0 0.01, and four tattoos is 0 0.005. So if we add this, the probability that the student has more than or equal to one tattoo is uh, 0.15. And using proper notation, we would say the probability that the student has greater than or equal to one tattoos is equal to 0.15. There's another way we could have done this, and probably an easier way. If the, prob if the student has at least one or more tattoos, then they definitely don't have zero tattoos. So we could have also said that the probability that the student has more than or equal to one tattoo is one minus the probability that the student has no tattoos. If they have no tattoos, that means that they're completely tattooless. So if they have one or more tattoos, it's one minus the probability that they have no tattoos. The probability they have zero tattoos is 0 0.850. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.850, which is also going to be 0 0.15. So you could do it either way. Um, part C, what is the probability that the student has at least two tattoos? So we have probability that x is greater than or equal to 2. That means the student can have two tattoos, or the student can have three tattoos, or the student can have four tattoos. Probability the student has two tattoos is 0 0.015. Three tattoos is 0 0.01. Four tattoos is 0 0.005. Um, if we add these, then this will equal to 0 0.03. Using proper notation, the probability that the student has two or more tattoos is equal to 0 0.03. Part D. What is the probability that the student has at most three tattoos? Well, at most three tattoos, it means the student can have zero tattoos, a student can have one tattoo, a student can have two tattoos, a student can have three. At most three, it means three is included. So it, it could have three tattoos. At most three, so it has to be three or less. I will let you guys finish this, and we will go over this in class. E and F, please work on these on your own, uh, and we will go over these in class as well. Next, we have a class activity, which we will also do in class. OK? Um, let's determine whether this table represents a probability distribution. So there are three conditions to be met. One, the variable has to be a random variable, which means it has to be quantitative in value, and it has to be determined by chance. OK? So uh, let's see if the first condition is met. The, uh, the values of the variable are 0, 1, 2, and 3. They're quantitative, and we'll assume they're determined by chance. Is the sum of all the probabilities equal to 1? If you add 0.3 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.47 plus, plus 0.18, if you add all these together, the sum is 1. So that's met. Is, is each individual probability, probability between 0 and 1? It is, so this is a probability distribution, because all three of these conditions are met. Let's look at the second one. Is the variable a random variable? Uh, it's quantitative in value, so that, that's fine. Um, is the sum of all the probabilities equal to 1? Well, before we even get to that, I can already see that one of the probabilities is not between 0 and 1. Therefore, this is not a probability distribution. The last part, please try by yourself. Why are these not examples of a probability distribution? And we will talk about these in class.